Noon here in Bethesda, Maryland, and this is news that you can use from from YAA YAA with your your hosts, Zach Zach and Ray. How are you today, Hansen? I'm doing pretty good, Pops. Howdy, everyone. We are going to have an interesting conversation here today, Pops. I want to talk about what happens if we're in a recession. Let's kick things of recession. I turn to our dear friends here at Investopedia. Oh, okay. A recession is a macroeconomic term that refers to a significant decline in general economic activity in a designated region. It had been typically recognized as two consecutive quarters of collected by GDP in conjunction with monthly indicators such as a rise in unemployment. However, the National Bureau of Economic Research, which officially declares recession, says that the two consecutive quarters of decline in real GDP are not how it defines. It's defined anymore. The NBER defines a recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy, lasting more than a few months, normally visible in real GDP, real income, employment, industrial production, and wholesale retail sales. Now, Pops. Can I ask you a question? Go for it. What's the definition of more than a few months? (laughs) (laughs) It's up to them. (laughs) Perfect. Okay. So nobody, based on this definition, nobody can know if you're in a recession until they declare it. You most certainly sold cars through a recession. Several. (laughs) Let's talk a little bit about what happened then when you, I mean, let's walk back. Take us down memory lane. Okay. Selling cars down. What happened to prices? Yeah. What happened to interest rates? What happened to um, uh, consumer demand? Things like that. And then let's try and think a little bit. Are we there now? And are we on the path to being there? Um, okay. Memory lane. Let's let's go to the Great Recession of 2008, 2007, 2008, 2009, whatever the hell it was. Um, it was a while ago. Um did prices decline? Yes, because demand Car declined. prices declined. Car, prices of just about everything declined. Housing prices declined, yeah. which was uh, which was one of the reasons why people who realized they were buried in their mortgages that you know they could have a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage on a house that was worth two hundred thousand, and they said to themselves, "Well, it doesn't make sense to keep making that payment." Um, so prices of everything declined because. The number of shoppers out there or qualified shoppers out there, people that actually had the money and the wherewithal to afford things, Mm -hmm. stopped buying things. So as soon as demand drops, prices tend to drop, especially if the demand drops for an extended period of time, which is what you would have happen in a recession. Now, the Acura store that I managed um, into that recession. Yeah. Prior to the recession, we were we were selling about uh, 150 new and used cars a month. That's a lot of Acuras. Yeah, it was about 100 new and 50 used. Wow. Um, when I was asked to leave during the Great Recession, um, that average had dropped to 50 new cars and about 20 used cars a month. Okay, so about half. About half. Within months of my departure, Um, there was a month, I think, I believe it was the month of August, where their new car sales had dropped to 18 for the month. Wow. Uh, That's about an 80% decline in sales. Wow. If you have inventory, and here's the difference between now and then, if you actually have on-hand inventory, and the carrying costs associated with that inventory, but you have no customers, then the only way you can think of being able to sell that inventory, and I remember saying that to my my Acura rep when he said, well, what do you think we can do? I said, well, I think what you need to do is you need to come up with offers that are so damn compelling that even in this economic time, people are going to go, that's way too good to pass on and we'll have to do it. Now, if that means you have to take a loss as a manufacturer to keep this stuff moving along, that's what you do. We'll do the same thing at the dealer end. Yeah. But that's what it takes to get people to continue spending money. The deals have to be so compelling that you just say to yourself, I can't afford not 
to do it. Now, what's interesting, Dad, part of what inspired today's topic was this article that was published in Automotive News. Uh -huh. Pent-up vehicle demand could offset loss of shoppers as interest rates rise. Edmund sees side-aligned buyers backfilling the used car market, but Cox expects pre-owned demand softening. So unlike 07, 08, 09, there's not inventory right now. That's that's a major difference. So if, it's it's like, what happens if there is a recession? So a slowdown in general economic activity, a slowdown in retail sales. Yes. Do we do? Is this kind of like? Remember when we talked about a V shaped recovery and everything like that? Is this going to be the slow like coming back down to okay, used cars are going to be like normal used car depreciation curves and patterns, and new car prices will be back under MSRP? Like, will that happen? Well, you know, one of the things that we see in a lot of areas is that even though the price, the wholesale values of used cars have continued to go up, there are more used cars available on a retail basis yeah. than there had been for quite some time. So that means there are some pockets of the country where dealers actually have a pretty good supply of used car inventory. They don't have any new car inventory for the lots, but they have pre-owned car inventory. If there's a recession, if interest rates rise, if um, people take themselves out of the market, the only on-hand inventory that these dealers are going to be concerned with are the used car inventories. And if they continue to sit, then the natural response from dealers is to, well, if it hasn't sold at X price, then we need to lower it to see if it'll sell at Y. Okay. And then you go to Z. Yeah. So what I suggested to my Acura rep in 2008, which was make the deal so compelling people will buy them anyhow, that's what's going to happen more than likely over time in the used car side of things. Now, if there is no new car inventory, then, then the pressure is not as great. The yeah. only thing that that could impact that pressure is if people stop putting their names on the incoming cars that and also you've got to imagine the manufacturers although and we've talked about a lot they're making record profits to yes. they do want to go back to producing more vehicles no one right now is is happy or satisfied with the amount of vehicles that are being produced even the manufacturers and dealers want a little bit more Maybe they, 20, 30, 40 percent or 50 percent. They, they, they want to double what they have at minimum. So, so if they if they have about a million new cars in dealer inventory, really what where they'd like to be is at about two million. So even if you're in a recession, the manufacturers are probably going to say, well, we're just going to keep producing the cars and we're going to ship them to our dealers and the dealers are going to buy them and they'll have to floor plan. Them. And it kind of makes you wonder, eventually the OEMs are going to figure it out. They'll get the supply chain back, whether that's this year, next year, 2025. Yeah. But that will, I mean, because you're saying there's two ways to put pressure on this. One is as consumers, we stop placing orders and mm -hmm. buying cars. The other is we actually finally produce more vehicles than we, we know that we need to use. Yes. Uh, than, than we need to use. And I think what will be interesting here is the OEMs have a fiduciary responsibility to figure out the supply chain issues to produce more vehicles. And at the same time, I think you're going to see a lot of consumer demand go away. I wonder if you end up yo-yoing, Dad. Let's be very clear here. New cars should not be selling for 5 10 15 20 percent over msrp period no that doesn't make sense that's a very 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 clear indication of a supply demand imbalance used cars have to depreciate they just like fundamentally the way our systems are set up they have to depreciate well they have over history correct yeah and, and like all of the infrastructure associated financial infrastructure all the legacy businesses that support people buying used cars pretty much rely on them depreciating i think that'll come back to to, to be normal in the future What'll be interesting here, Dad, is it shot right up? Mm -hmm. Could it fall right back down if if new car manufacturers start producing like crazy? If there is an eighteen month or two year long recession, you could end up with a period here where there's actually way more supply than there is demand. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, because the the increase in values, um, both on the wholesale and the retail side of things, happened swiftly. I mean, really swiftly started like last August, July or August, and worked its way right through the end of the year. And it, it was like somebody sent up a rocket ship. Now, 
if we are indeed in a recession or about to enter into a recession, um, yeah, it could be like that rocket ship's falling back down to earth without a parachute. It very well could happen. Uh, you know, the Fed will do what the Fed will try to do. Um, you know, these we're, we're dealing with high inflation. We're, we're going to be dealing with higher interest rates. The Fed wants to slow things down. Um, and things could be slowing down on, all on their own because um, people are... It, People just aren't spending to the same degree that they were. Gasoline prices are too high. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm telling you, though, I can see it. I can see over the next two years the the, the quick climb up and the quick climb down, uh, the fall down. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like that, which was not the case, I imagine, back in 08, 09. Prices well, were down. Prices were down. But then it took, what, the past 12 years? For the, them recovery, to come back the recovery was long and hard. Um, you know, it, 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 to this day, there's probably still parts of the economy that suffered from the Great Recession. Um, I'm not sure wages have ever really completely recovered to the levels that they were at prior to the, re, to the Great yeah. Recession. Um, so, yeah. Um, Let's jump to the chat pops. We've got a couple interesting comments that are coming in here. First, we'll start off with Tony. Thanks for being here, Tony. Hey, YAA. Did you think? Do you think if we witness a new recession by chance, there will be huge incentives or rebates on new inventory if it's available? I think so. At, at some point, if if demand softens, but the manufacturers can figure out how to build more cars and ship them to their dealer body, which is what they're going to do, trust me, um, because they want to build up inventories again, not to the four million that it had been, but but half of that. Um, then at a certain point, if they're still not selling, then yeah, the deal, the manufacturers will come back with incentives. Now that, you know, th that's not going to be like two months from now. No. That might not be for eight, 10, 12 months from now, if at all. Could be two years. Yes. It really, really could. Yeah. Let's jump over here to uh, Tom. He's saying, I work for a dealership, but repos are through the roof. Wow. And that's what I find interesting is I was just reading something in automotive news the other day about how um, delinquencies have only ticked up a tiny, tiny bit. Um, but yeah, I would suspect uh, when people have to decide between being able to fill the tank with gas or making the car payment, well, they're going to fill the tank with gas. I yeah. mean, what, what, what's, the, point B. what's the point of making the car payment if you can't fill the car with gas and drive it. Tim says, maybe Ford will start to send out the 53,000 cars that are sitting in lots, including my Bronco, <laughs> if the recession hits sooner. So in the same breath that I'm talking about, maybe they'll figure it out. Maybe production will be, actually, you know what? That's going to take years. And that's to Christopher's point. Yes. Supply shortages will be the same issue for the next several years. Shortages of older cars will be the biggest challenge for working people. Yes. And that drives to Eric's comment which is I would love to buy a compact car right now, but I cannot find a single one to test drive. So the shortage of compact and fuel-efficient vehicles and the shortage of older vehicles that are at more quote-unquote price attainable. How, how about, how attainable about just the points. shortage of affordable affordable vehicles? Just leave it at affordable. It doesn't They're, exist. Not in the, world, in the world I'm living in these days. Quick shout outs here from Amigos 182. Got my 2023 Kia Sportage at MSRP. Thank you guys. You guys rock no incentives, but at MSRP. Well, that's, a, that's a win in today's world. Especially if you know what's going on with the Kia brand right now. A yes. lot of their vehicles selling for 20% above MSRP. Mm -hmm. Thomas McGowan. I'm watching this one on a bit of a delay, but I just wanted to say thank you, Ray and Zach. You both helped me learn how to properly negotiate, and we knocked an extra 2000 off of the asking price. Thank you, YAA. That's well, fantastic. We're, well, we're glad we could help. That's good to hear. Yeah. Brian. Brian's here. He's a uh, sale, uh, internet sales manager, I think, at a Mazda dealership that sells at MSRP. I in, have, in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. Philadelphia. On Essington Avenue, if I'm not mistaken. Is my dad from Philly? You tell me. Mm -hmm. I have names on 90% of my Mazda and Hyundai inbound vehicles for June, July. I tell people all the time, if people took a two-month break from buying, the situation would get better for consumers. Now, think a little bit about what the OEMs are doing. You can no longer place a 2022 factory order on a Ford F-150, with the exception of the Raptor. Why? Why? 
the, the funny thing about the Raptor part is you're not going to get the 2022 <laughs> Raptor, even if you order it, because, well, they're not going to build it. But that's We're going to talk funny. about Ford in a minute here, because you know what? They, yeah, I'm starting to lose faith in Ford. I had faith when they sent out their first memo. The reason I bring that up there, Dad, is because the OEMs are starting to do this. You want to buy a 2022? Actually, we're done. We're done the model year three, four months earlier than normal because we're stockpiling supplies for the 2023 model. Yes. They're kind of forcing our hand there. Yes. Brian, you never did get back to me. You, you going to give me a deal on a Mazda so if, if you want me to get out of that Mini that I'm driving? We've got Sylvia asking, Pops, can the regular public go to dealer auctions? No. You have to be registered. Uh, now, that's not to say that there aren't dealers out there that would take as a guest to the auction uh, their retail buyer and let their retail buyer uh, pick out the car that they want to buy. Interesting question here, Pops. From... Never heard of that happening, by the way. <laughs> From Pino, what if I ordered a car and it's not going to be here for four months and we go into a recession? If there is a rebate, you think I can apply them to my purchase or my liked? Can you apply rebates at the time that you yes. get delivery? Yes, and that goes for, for any new car that you may be on a waiting list for, or you may have ordered, or you know it's been allocated and it'll be incoming. Um, if you If you negotiate your pricing on those incoming vehicles, um, part of it is subject to any uh, dealer or factory incentive, consumer incentives that are available at that time, they will be applied. Congratulations to Core Guy. Hope it all goes well. Got a call from Younger Toyota. Our RAV4 is ready for pickup on Saturday. We have a written and signed buyer's order for MSRP, $31,704. Hope there's no shenanigans. I'll have a good or bad story on Sunday. Well, Core Guy, we are pulling for you, my friend, that, that, there, that hopefully there will be no shenanigans and you get exactly what it is for the price that you expected to pay. One more question here, then we're going to jump to the next story. Chrono, this is super interesting. I am in a position where I need to rent a car for a week or two. Do I rent or buy a cheap used car for a month and flip it back? What would you do? There's no such thing as a cheap used car. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, it's probably going to still appreciate for another month. Is it? I think so. Okay, it might. It very well might. I mean, we haven't seen anything that would indicate that it wouldn't. But you know, if you buy it and it's a cheap used car, well, anything that might go wrong with that cheap used car during that month, that's on you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That actually would probably be the thing that would stop me from <laughs> it doing would that. Stop me. All right, Pops, let's switch gears. I want to talk about this story that was in Car Buzz, okay? Yes. It is Ford has a new plan to stop dealer markups. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about this? Yeah, I read that this morning. Ford is trying its hardest to make sure we pay MSRP for our cars. So let me read this out briefly and we'll talk oh, about it. Please. If anyone is having a tough time with markups right now, it's Ford, the brand, and Kia and Hyundai and everyone else. Yeah. But, except for Stellantis. The brand's models, like the Ford Bronco, have long suffered from unreasonable markups from dealers. It's a story we've heard before, and it's starting to repeat itself with the F-150 Lightning. Platinum trim models are already marked up past $100,000. Ford tried to do something about it with CEO Jim Farley telling dealers that they'd best cut it out or their inventory would be affected. We haven't seen that actually happen. Yeah. Evidently, that warning has wasn't heeded by some, again, because Ford won't actually do it. So Ford is trying another approach. The brand is implementing a more strict name match policy across the board per a bulletin sent out this week yeah. name match you know what that means we're about to break it down i can tell you go for it that's why uh, we're on the show name match is if you if if there's an order placed as a sold order with the manufacturer mm -hmm. there's a customer's name that is associated with it at the time you place the order well when you sell that vehicle and you and you report it via the retail delivery report to the manufacturer, the name of the person that bought it has to match the name of the person who placed the order. By doing that, you're seeing to it that the orders are legitimate. That's the idea behind it. So name match has good intentions. Yeah, except, ex, ex, except well, you know, it only has to match 75% of the time. <laughs> For those unfamiliar with the term, a name match policy effectively states that when a person orders a car through a dealer, they must be the sole um, recipient of the vehicle. 
So just what you said. Yeah. The new policy says that 75% of cars ordered by dealers must be name matched to a customer. Previously, the policy said that number had to be 70% of cars ordered. And that extra 5% is going to make a huge difference. <laughs> Ford is also <laughs> closing a loophole previously. Closing a loophole previously, a provision allowed dealers a 120-day period from the order receipt date to the delivery date after which that 70% name match policy was voided. Now dealers will be held accountable for every violation of the name match policy, regardless of circumstance. Oh, really? Now, Pops. I now bet pops. you there's some cir circumstances they haven't thought of that dealers will encounter that, well, Ford will make exceptions because nothing, nothing <laughs> in life is guaranteed, including the fact that somebody who placed an order, I don't know, two years ago for their Ford Bronco that they haven't got yet could have dropped dead between the time they ordered it and the time Ford actually built the damn thing. But, hey, there'll be no exception. <laughs> Tell that to the dead man. <laughs> yeah. Punishment. Punishment. Punishment, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Punishment for breaking the name match now yeah. means that dealers will forfeit a month's worth of allocations, and at three violations, they will go into timeout. Dealers will be... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> dealers will be kicked out of the Ford name match and integrity, integrity policy entirely. That means it'll be extremely difficult for repeat offending dealers to do business. Basically, it's a toe the line or get out for four dealers. Now, finally, the memo also states that the 75% name match policy will rise again. Yeah. Rise again like the dead man yeah. to 80% of orders for 2023 model yeah. year vehicles. Yeah. Critically, that includes the F-150. Yeah. Apparently, for that dead like, man, you're going to have to take a picture of his headstone and send it to Ford to say, hey, here's the reason he couldn't pick it up. <sighs> So, you know what that policy says to me? Who's going to be the first dealer to sue us? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what's going to happen. I wonder in what court, uh, like in what jurisdiction we should be watching out for so we can break the news of when, I don't know, XYZ Ford sues for the OEM because they're yeah. selectively enforcing yeah, yeah. this because it happens yeah. everywhere. Yeah, because we're going to put you in timeout. And as the dealer, you have to go stand in the corner and face the wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For a month. Do it for a month. <sighs> it's disappointing. But at the same time, I like, get why they're putting these these out there. Yeah, it's but, great. Like, it means it's great nothing. PR. It is great PR. Yeah, we're going to have name match. We're yeah. going to have name yeah. match. Explain that to the dead guy. Um, Another one pops. Yeah. Ford Expedition Lincoln Navigator recalled for fire risk. There were actually three Ford recalls announced today, but this one was the most egregious, I'd say. Um, it's owners of 2021 model year uh, Lincoln Navigators and Ford Expeditions. They just catch on fire, and no um, one seems to know why. There's been 16. Yep. 16 fires. Um, so uh, if you own one of those that are affected in your garage, that are affected by the recall, you are asked not to park it in your garage. Now, you know, if you live in a, in a condominium complex yep. or an apartment complex that has underground parking um, and there's no other real parking within your neighborhood other than on the street parking that's metered or something like that, is, is Ford going to reimburse you for the parking expense to park at those meters? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> just like General Motors and the Bolt. This one yeah. pops. Phil Fox. Phil, I hope you are still on the stream here. If I buy out my lease on my 2019 Corolla, is it mandatory that no. I must pay the $1,500 safety check at the dealer before I can purchase, or can I pass on the safety check? Let's talk about it. It is one. not mandatory. If if you look at your lease contract, it will state in, in most cases that there are it is not subject to other fees. The other fees are NA, non-applicable. You can buy the car for the residual value. If you are in a state that requires that sales tax be paid on that purchase, then you'll have to pay the sales tax. If you are in a state that says you can't keep the, the plates and registration uh, because they're in the leasing company's name, then you're going to have to pay for new plates and registration. There is nothing in a lease agreement that says you must pay for a safety inspection. That is just a dealer creating a, 
a way uh, to find additional profit when somebody wants to buy out their lease. And here you go, Space in the chat telling you to go directly to Toyota Financial Services. Yeah. Intelligent car buying saying the same thing as well. So Toyota Financial Services, you can buy directly from them, fortunately. Yeah with Toyotas. And I can buy directly from my mini financial service. We've got a great comment here from Eric. I wish I knew which dealerships are going are doing market adjustments without having to ask them in justice. Thank you, Justice. Yes. If you go to that URL, it literally will tell you because we have the YAA crowdsourced community dealer reviews. Mm -hmm. I'll pull it up on the screen. Oh, actually, I want everyone to go. Just go to that URL. Just join yaa.com slash dealers, and then you can use the drop downs to sort by have reviews. Yes. And do they charge MSRP? There's also a great website called markups.org, which actually is a partner of YAA. I'm going to pull it up because you go to their website nowadays. Boom. Oh, my God. Boom shakalaka. If you're going to join YAA as a, a community member, use a, the code Markups. There's a semi-bald guy. Shh. So what Markups does is they crowdsource just the specific markups, not reviews on the dealership, yes. but just the markups. If you're going to join YAA, use their code, 20%. They'll, they'll thank you for that. Yeah. Um, they'll be happy about it. But yes, there are different ways in the community coming together. There's a great way to help figure out dealerships that aren't marking up, like Brian's, like Earl Stewart. Like There's a handful of them out there. Yes. Oh, man, we got this comment here from Tom. There's going to be a lot of cars with salvage titles being sold. I hope not, but yeah, I kind of very well could that, be. Yeah, potentially it's happening happen. now. Hey, yeah, you know what? And the good thing is, is that Vroom was kind enough and gracious enough to sell some of them without telling their customers that. Another question here from Eric. I'm interested in a car allegedly alleged by the the lawsuit yeah by the attorney general of the state of texas, texas. Yes. i am interested in a car and the dealership wants me to give them a 500 dollars refundable deposit is there any risk in doing this as long as it's stated in writing and signed and agreed to by all parties that the deposit is refundable and if there's any um reasons as to why it would or wouldn't be refundable. It's all disclosed, and you shouldn't have an issue. Telling well, you, and also, yeah. if I may, check on the uh, on on any reviews of that dealership and see if there's ever been any issues with them in the past. Definitely, telling here saying that dealers are saying that processing a lease buy it at the store is effectively a used car purchase. The lease is transferred to the dealer, then the customer dealer has some liability there. What's your uh, take on that? That is that it. Well, that's the line we used to use. Yeah. Um, in the state of Maryland, because it, they did require a Maryland state inspection, and it was it, the way it was set up is that the dealership had to show ownership of the vehicle at least for a few minutes, yeah. so that they could then sell it. And yes, there would be some liability issues in the state of Maryland. They have changed that, where a a lease buyout no longer requires a safety inspection, and there is no dealer liability. Um, so if you buy it directly from the lender and in a lot of states you can, uh, then you don't have to worry about it, but it's in some states that that very well could be true. Exactly. It's state by state. And you shouldn't pay for anything more than a standard state safety inspection. Now, if that safety inspection were to, uh, come across some items that would not pass, uh, you would have to get those items fixed in order for to comply with the safety inspection. Absolutely. Get an interesting, and, and Vincent's in on here, and PA Hyundai won't let you buy your lease from them. You must go back to the dealer. Okay. Different manufacturers yes. and different captive leasing companies yes. are Absolutely. different. Like yes. Ford, you have to go back to a dealership, and they've been that way forever. You can't, you can't get, you. the only one that will give you a lease payoff for a Ford is the originating dealer. Which causes all sorts of potential issues. Yes. With your Mini that you're getting the lease payout from, you just went directly to BMW Financial Services, right? Yeah, Mini Financial Services. Mini Financial yeah, Services. Just, yeah. Every OEM is different. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is this? For the deposit thing, also have the dealer sign a contract that he, she will sell the car at the stated price as yes. as of today when you... Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. If you're unless, of, unless, of course, there's any any manufacturer price increase that would impact the price of the vehicle. So if, let's say the MSRP of the vehicle today is $50,000, okay, but between now and when yours actually gets built and invoiced, that that manufacturer has increased the MSRP by $500 and the new MSRP is now $50,500, 
you would have to pay the additional $500. Super interesting question here from Tanic Dad. Cars in Puerto Rico, and we hear this from Bahami and Lily. Yes. Yeah. Um, 30 to 40% more than MSRP. My question is, what do you think about the prices in Puerto Rico and how a possible recession could help car buyers in the small island? Um. You know, I have I have no idea. My my thinking though would be the same thing here. Like yes. if, if there is a recession, prices will go down. I bet you it'd they be more should. more volatile there than here. Um there the the dilemma there is there's you know obviously not as many cars shipped to Puerto Rico and the manufacturers can can allocate less cars to Puerto Rico. Santana's got a question for you, Pops. Do dealers have to disclose accidents that happened in transit? I, when you, yeah, I, I find this fascinating. Only, only if the, if, if the accident, if the accident happened in transit and it was repaired by the manufacturer, it does not have to be disclosed. If the, if the accident happened from the time it left the distribution center and on its way to the dealership. And if the amount of the accident exceeds 3% of the MS, the amount to repair the accident yeah. exceeds 3% of the MSRP, then the dealer is mandated to disclose that. If it is less than the 3%, they are not. You've shared stories. I mean, cars get shipped over on boats, and you. Yeah. What was the code in your in your system that you'd like know a car had ac like had an incident? It's been held up at port. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You would get cars that were just like stuck at port because yeah. they're at a repair shop. Yes, they're, repair at, work done. they're they're at they're at their their uh, um, body shop, taking care of whatever the issue was, whether it's respraying a bumper or replacing a fender or whatever it is, and those don't get disclosed to the dealer. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go, Susanna. A recession in the U.S. will definitely impact the export prices. There's a saying that if the United States sneezes, the Bahamas catches a cold. Wow. There you have it. Wasn't aware of that. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. A couple more here, and then we'll call it a day. Pops Mark says, do OEMs care about the dealer markups? No. It'll never happen. Yeah. I think I was naive. They, they pretend to care. Yeah. I was naive to think that they did, although maybe yeah. someday it'll come around. You know what's funny? When huh. when um, you were on the Earl Stewart radio yeah. show on Saturday. Yeah. And somebody had brought up the same thing that we saw about um you can't sell the demonstrator lightning. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. For the, the, for a twenty five thousand dollar yeah. fine if you do if you sell it before 180 days. Yeah. The words out of Earl's mouth were well just do the math. If you can get a hundred thousand dollars more who isn't going to pay the twenty five thousand to sell it. Yeah. Do they care? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Frazier with an interesting uh, comment here. Can you title a car bought in Mexico? I thought maybe if I buy a new car in Mexico, since they sell some of the same vehicles and drive it back up here, I might save some money. Uh, well, you have to. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't. I, well, it would be an import. It would car. be an import. Yeah. And so there's different rules and regulations regarding cars that are imported from either Mexico or Canada, which, to be clear, voids the manufacturer in warranty. many cases because the Mexico warranty is not transferable to the United States. Yeah, we uh, see a lot you, of that. But 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 you would have to you would have to check and find out what all the rules and regulations are. We're getting into an interesting space. Randy yeah. says, isn't it Ray's birthday? Not, no, not next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. So next. please tune in next Wednesday. I will, I will, I am going to pray to the clickbait gods yes. Tuesday night that I can come up with a good one to get a lot of people here to celebrate your birthday next well, Wednesday. You know, we'll promise them all a birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ray's birthday and we're giving you the present. <laughs> <laughs> Your radio voice is something else. Oh, I'm sorry. Learning fast. Carvana and Vroom offers have dropped off a cliff lately. I wouldn't so count on getting a prices. decent resale yeah. value from them. CarMax offers are still good. Yeah, and we we saw what driveway offers are pretty solid. And then also, obviously, going to local dealerships again if you're going to sell your car. Yes. And of course, private party. Yes. All right, Pops, let's call today. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us. Please, if you listen to the podcast, we appreciate when you leave reviews. I'm going to I'm gonna show you the reviews at the end of the week. Sometimes yeah, you've we get never, you've never, I'll show you at the end of the week. Okay, we sure. really appreciate that. Yesterday, we were actually on a podcast. It'll be coming out hopefully next week with the TFL guys, with yes. Andre from TFL. So we we're excited yes. about that. And um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Tomorrow's Friday with Miss Kimberly Klein. Yes, tomorrow is uh, Kimberly's Corner with, with the F&I goddess herself, Kimberly Klein. So we'll be back here tomorrow at noon. Eastern, nine specific from our worldwide headquarters.
headquarters in downtown Bethesda, Maryland, with more news that you can use from YAA. Thank you, Pops. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you all. We'll see you all tomorrow. Boom.